ICW Eurodrive, now empowered. From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. In our top stories this week, we speak to Transnet about the freight utilities' plans to crowd in domestic industry around its 80.5 billion rand investment program. Mining explosives company BME opens its first shock tube plant. And we look at a new water sanitation tool for Africa. There is growing pressure on South Africa's state-owned enterprises to generate localization opportunities around their big investment programs. We spoke to Transnet Acting CEO Chris Wells about the utility's plans for meeting this objective. Terence Creamer reports. The new administration under President Jacob Zuma has placed the country's 787 billion infrastructure push at the heart of its stimulus response to the economic crisis. But it also wants state enterprises to do more to support the creation of industrial activity and jobs around these programs. Acting CEO Chris Wells explains how Transnet is responding. And basically what we've done is we've said for large equipment that we um, are ordering, like cranes and locomotives, where it is appropriate and, and cost effective, we'd like to build a skills base here. And locomotives, we want to do a lot of the engineering and assembly for cranes, the assembly um, and certain engineering, although the majority of parts will be manufactured overseas. And that's already uh, starting. We've got um, a hundred loco uh, tender um, out at the moment. And a requirement, again, will be uh, local engineering and assembly. Um, and eventually increasing the um, total amount done in South Africa as a proportion of the total order cost um, higher and higher as we can. There is also growing pressure to show that the so-called Competitive Supply Development Program, or CSDP, is an effective localization platform. Some believe it would be more appropriate to set hard offset targets, but for repeat locomotive, crane and spares orders, Transnet believes the CSDP to be appropriate. The CSDP is the most practical and uh, we think value-adding way of, uh, uh, of localizing a, a large part of content and, and um, creating employment. Of the 80 billion, we estimate about 35% will be imported components. The rest will be um, sourced locally. The, the local supplier might be importing uh, part of what the resource locally. But so the vast majority is uh, local engineering expertise, construction, project management, um, and also uh, local supplied uh, goods. For example, in our, in our new refined products pipeline, um, the steel for the pipeline, um, we could only uh, procure the 16 inch uh, locally, the 24 inch we needed to import because uh, the local supplier couldn't uh, produce steel of that dimension. Mining explosives firm BME has opened its first shock tube production facility, positioning the company to be a producer of safer blasting alternatives. Jonathan Furry has the story. The establishment of BME's shock tube production facility in Fochville, in the northwest province, means that the company is able to provide a safer blasting alternative to the mining industry as opposed to importing it. BME's director of production, Davi Mainhart, reports that this is a big step for the company. That specific plant um, puts us in a position to go out, uh, operate in the business uh, independently. It puts us in the position to um, really go and expand our business. Currently our underground business is fairly, our market share is fairly modest and uh, we are convinced that um, that specific plant will enable us with the whole basket of goods to go and serve the customer base much better. The company chose to develop the facility on a semi-automated basis as opposed to a heavy capital investment. We have uh, over a number of years now done lots of research in terms of the best business model going forward and um, 
the main thing for us is to be able to maintain our operational cost base at any volume. And we believe that this specific plant will enable us to do exactly that. About 45% of Africa's population lacks access to clean water. Humanitarian organization Vertical Life has started a project to take 200,000 life straws to cholera hotspots between Cape Town and Cairo. Lindsay Berry has the story. I'm here with Matthew Carter from the Vertical Life Africa Project. They're traveling from Cape to Cairo to drop off 200,000 life straws to cholera affected areas. My primary focus or my primary concern was just the fact that kids are dying every single day. Like you've seen the stats and you know about like over 5,000 kids dying in Africa alone. There's so many people that are just going to bed, they, they, they wake up and they're not sure are they going to make it or not. Um, there's school days being lost. Kids can't go to school just because they're sick, too sick to go to school. The life straw was developed by Swiss relief product manufacturer Vestergaard Franson and can remove more than 98% of waterborne viruses. We, we look at individuals who are, are vulnerable, so kids, elderly, women who are pregnant, who just can't walk the estimated 5Ks a day to go get drinking water and then it might not be safe. So I'll be focusing on those groups primarily. Distribution of the straws will mainly be to rural areas and will be accompanied by a three-day educational program on how to prevent and treat waterborne diseases. It's, it starts off in the front with uh, two microfilters, starts off at 100 microns, then goes down to 15 microns. 100 microns is about the same thickness as your hair, then 15 microns will start to filter out clusters of uh, bacteria. Um, then it goes through iodine beads, which kills off a lot of viruses, it kills off uh, some, some of the bacteria as well. Then it goes to the activated charcoal. Now a lot of people know that if you're allergic to shellfish or anything like that, you're also allergic to iodine, which is a problem. So the activated charcoal will remove the iodine, as well as it will make the water taste better. Um, a lot of the things that we've seen, a lot of chemicals, etc., don't actually improve the taste of the water, which isn't great. So we also try to improve the taste of the water. It requires no batteries, no electricity, uh, none of that. And it's quite tough and almost unbreakable, which is perfect for Africa. And now for a sneak preview of this week's Engineering News magazine. Read our cover story on South Africa's clean fuels conundrum, where we explore capital costs versus environmental benefits. We report that South Africa's Sumbandila satellite is likely to be launched on the 20th of August this year. And a new Pretoria Mall is aiming for a five-star green building rating. And in Mining Weekly this week, our cover story focuses on Finnish company Ruki's ambition to integrate ferrochrome and platinum production and processing. Harmony Gold CEO Graeme Briggs speaks on the impact of the strong rand on gold companies. And we report that toxic water levels are rising, while government and mining companies bicker about the cost of cleaning up. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy. Engineering news, not just for engineers.